Oh. Hello, good people. It's Rob Lee. There's another shooting. Was it real or is it a hoax? Can you even tell? Do, at this point, do you believe and how long has it been since you believe anything that you've seen on the television or the Internet? Do you care? Whether it is real, as most of them are simply blatant hoaxes, one thing is for sure. It is nauseating to me to see people pretending to care when you know they do not. There's nothing like seeing people boo-hoo and cry when you know they don't give a damn. These people shed tears for strangers but deny God and Jesus and the Holy Word. There are no tears shed for somebody that was killed last night in a car crash or the little children that were poisoned with their baby food or the mom that was raped. It's only sensationalized when it's put on the tell evil vision. Welcome to the American hive mind the hive mind of Americans. Hundreds of millions of delusional people eating, sleeping, and living a lie. Did you know that the majority of all ads on the television and internet are health related? Now, they all say in the end, consult your doctor. That's what they say. You will never hear the enemy say, consult God. Because who could heal you? Who could give you the answer better than God? But it's always consult another man. Consult another man, he'll fix you. He'll point you. He'll give you a potion of pill. He'll make you better. Sadly, the people have never fully understood the power and the control of the flow of information. You see, Good folks, the newspapers of the 1920s and 30s in the United States could make you guilty or set you free. They could destroy you or exalt you to stardom. This is the power that people gave newspapers and radio back in the day. It was about lies and propaganda on a scale that most will never understand. In 1935 America, a single article in a large city could convict, or even in a small city, could convict an innocent man of a crime that he did not commit. The jury pool would be tainted because... Contrary to popular belief, let's say you go on trial and you have a jury trial. The only one who can really save you, and I've been in front of judges, man. The only one who can really save you is God. Because juries are mere men and women, and some of them incredibly evil, and they read newspapers. Yes, they're told you shouldn't do that. They do it, and their minds are tainted. You could convict an innocent man or woman of a crime they did not can convict in the media. It would turn the masses against this person before the people even knew the evidence and vice versa. What it has also been known to do more than that is the other side of the coin. The newspaper and the radio in the early days could free killers, rapists, and thieves. It could make heroes and saints out of people that could do the most evil and hideous crimes. This is why your enemy, the synagogue of Satan, and every country, for that matter, when the technology came of age, took control of every single newspaper, and a few decades later, radio, a few decades later, television, and then came the internet. Folks, what you have is the television and the internet are extensions of the warped and perverted minds of the masses. That's why we have TV. That's why we have the internet, because there had to be a people for it. I'm not talking about a guy who's on YouTube watching a video how to fix his car. I'm talking about when people look for news. They want news. I'm not talking about looking at some scenery or look looking at a river in, in Wyoming or how to fix your plumbing. I'm talking about they want news. They want answers. They want answers to this life. These people have denied God and they have become slaves, prostitutes, pigs, and dogs to the evil of this world. Your enemy is using technology to enslave the entire world. They are using lies to keep the people dependent on them. That's communism. Most people do not even question the lie any longer. They have become so conditioned mentally in your mind, they will readily accept the media and the internet as gospel. It's truth. Now, the Bible, that's false. The internet and television, that's truth. And even you'll hear some people say, yeah, I know they tell some lies, but there's a lot of truth in there too. How can anybody 
if you have any kind, any kind of even a minute amount of understanding of God, why would you trust anybody that God Almighty has said, A, born evil, Romans 9, 21 through 23, and, and two, B, they are the children of the devil, John 8, 44. So those are the people that give you your news, and these are the people, well, they must be telling the truth. How does a born liar tell the truth? After exploring the television and the internet for a day when there's breaking news, something happens. The people begin to feel drained. They start to feel tired. They become anxious, depressed, and worried. You see, what the television and the internet does, it keeps the people in a state of suspense, which is by definition, anxious anticipation and expectation. Now, think about what I've just told you. Those three words, anxious, anticipation, and expectation. You see how the emotions, your emotions, their emotions are controlled up and down like a roller coaster. And pretty soon this becomes addictive. And pretty soon, like any addiction, it takes control over you. You see, if you control the masses' minds, the bodies are going to follow. The masses joyfully do as they're told. In fact, they look at their oppressors as their saviors because they have no knowledge or desire to know the love of the true Father and the true Savior, the Father Jehovah and His Son, Jesus Christ, whom He gave everything to. Disregard all this nonsense and BS about FEMA camps. Show me where hundreds of thousands of people are locked up in, in FEMA camps in Western culture. They're simply not needed, not, not at this point. The masses are already imprisoned in their own minds, man. Why do we need physical camps when you can simply put on the television and the internet and they are locked in? You don't need a, you don't need a fence, man. You don't need it. The masses will do exactly as their slave masters tell them. And they will follow the most sinister, evil, and hideous lies given to them. They will spit in the eyes of the Almighty Father. They will spit in the eyes of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and follow the lie all the way to the bowels of hell. The people go everywhere for answers. I mean, man, they want them. They swim the oceans, man. They climb the mountain. We got to have an answer. They won't go to God. God just don't have, God don't, yeah, God might know a little bit, but hey, you know what? Sean Hannity and Tucker Carlson and Rachel Maddow and my favorite guy on Bitch Shoot, they, hey, they, they got the answers, man. We are surrounded in these last days that is getting more batshit crazy about it by the day. We are surrounded by parents, grandparents, our children, or even our own children, teachers, cops, doctors, nurses, your best friends, your childhood buddy that you grew up with now who's, who's now walking around saying, hey, a man or a woman can be 50 different genders. It's cool, man. They ain't bothered me. Media whores, social workers, actors, athletes, and a slew of internet ambulance chasers that will say and do anything to be a part of the new age agenda of the devil. Jesus, who cannot lie, said that we would be hated for his name's sake. It means we will be hated because we are of the family of the one true father. We are the Jesus people. So from the ancient days until now, people want answers to the, answer, to the mysteries of this life. And from ancient scrolls, books, potions, and deals with the devil, the people will do almost anything to make their lives better. They will. I mean, anything. People have sailed oceans, man, looking for that book, looking for an answer. They've climbed mountains. They've braved the deserts and all the quests to the elusive answers to this life. Who are we? Why are we here? And is there a God? At no other time in history that I know of has men and women been so desperate to have knowledge and so completely ignorant of who and what has the answers. Therefore, God Almighty has allowed them to become the victim. They fall prey to an evil that God allows to deceive and lie. Good people, this life can be hard, and sometimes it can be painful. And yet, through all of this, there is a simplicity in our lives, and it comes down to one word, choice. It's merely the choice that we make. Do we follow our Heavenly Father who is the only God, who is the boss of it all, and he gave it to his son and said, follow Jesus back to me. Or, on the other hand, do you follow the lies and the liars of this world and the billions that choose to sell out for a few fleeting moments of pleasure? 
One of the most important messages that I have shared is that we are not all called by the Father. We're not all the same, man. Okay, we're just not the same. Moreover, just as Jesus said, many called but few chosen. Friends, the few chosen had to have two qualities, and Jesus shared those with us. Remember these words, the two qualities. Matthew chapter 22, this is Jesus being questioned, being questioned by a lawyer. Matthew chapter 22, verses 35 through 38. Pay attention to what your king says, and let's pick up on these two qualities of each of us to be a follower and a son of God. Matthew chapter 22, verse 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked Jesus a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Now, what are the two qualities that I am referring to if we read that? Folks, if we love our Father with everything in us, this in turn causes us to love Jesus with everything in us. We become these two qualities, loving and faithful children. These are the two qualities. We are loving, we love our Father, we love our Savior, which is an extension of the Father. We become loving and we become faithful children. These are the qualities that make you Moreover, all of it goes through one man who walked this earth and then took his place in heaven as the Son of God at the right hand of God, Jesus. The image of God Almighty, the living word made flesh, the importance of Jesus, and no other fake names, Jesus. Now, we read the words that are the greatest tr truth ever written, yet denied by the masses, yet denied by the masses, but they're still looking for answers through Sean Handy, Tucker Carlson, Rachel Maddow, or anybody else, man. They're looking for answers. They're looking for truths. They're not going to find them. The image of God Almighty, Jesus Christ. Listen to these words. John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. You follow Jesus. He's the way. He knows where we're going. He is the truth. Truth personified. Never lied. Can't lie. And the life. That life, eternal life through Jesus Christ. No man cometh unto the Father but by Jesus. Jesus says, no, but none of you can ever go to God Almighty, Jehovah. You can never go to him unless you come through me. And if you don't go through me, guess what? Your ass don't make it. Take it any way that you like. And let, unless it goes through Jesus. And no, no, not Muhammad, Buddha, Krishna, Kali, none of that nonsense. If it don't go through Jesus, send it back. If they bring it to the table, tell them to take it back to the kitchen and make it again because they made it wrong. John 18, 37. This is when Pontius Pilate was talking to Jesus. And Jesus was about ready to be crucified by the Jews. But we had this poignant conversation between uh, Pontius Pilate, who was the governor of this dusty province. Okay, Now, they're in Jerusalem. This is Pilate talking to Jesus. Notice what Jesus says. Pilate therefore said unto Jesus, Art thou a king? Jesus answered, Thou sayest I am a king. To this end I was born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Let me say it again for you. Jesus, the king of kings, the, the, the savior, the one that God Almighty said, This is a part of me. I give it all to my son. Jesus Christ says, everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Everyone that is of the truth, underline truth, hears the voice of Jesus. Underline that and just keep, just keep underlining that, Jesus. If you're of the truth, you hear the words of Jesus. And Jesus says in John chapter 10 that he calls us by name. He knows us. You see, we hear him and he knows us. It's intimate, man. When you get to a point in your life when it's Jesus, and you don't give to nothing about who cares, it's Jesus. And if you got to tell the world, hey, you all can go to hell, it's Jesus. You don't care anymore because you know the truth. Remember, Jesus just said, I am the way, the truth. See, once you know the truth, why would you ever want to live the lie? And the truth is what? Jesus. Thank you for watching.